Our topic is hydrated salts and water of crystallization in solution. Hydrated salts and water of crystallization. First you must know what is hydrolyzation and what is water of crystallization. First we will discuss the hydrated salt that is the hydration. So when the ionic substances that, are, that you are taking some substances that is dissolved in the water. So water, so while dissolving the substance which dissolves in water, it is called aqueous solution. But you are taking in a little quantity, no? So because of that, the substance which dissolves in water forms the saturated aqueous solution. So how this saturated aqueous solution is from forming means the ions which you taken in the substance is attracted with the water molecules. So it's attract with the water molecules and it, it that, uh, that attraction is due to the chemical nature. That is the chemically it was attached to the uh, substance. The substance and the water molecules are attached to the chemically with some ratio. That process is called hydration. Why we use, using this hydration means that is because of water. We are say, saying it as Hydration that is the substance dissolving in water. That process is called hydration. So now you uh, clear with the hydration. No? Now we will see the water of crystallization. The ionic substances are crystallized. That is they crystallize out from saturated aqueous solution with a definite number of molecules of water. So from the saturated aqueous solution, okay, the substance are Crystallized. The ionic substance are crystallized with the number of water molecules. So the num the, the, that is the ionic substance crystallizes with the number of molecules of water in the aqueous solution, saturated aqueous solution. So the number of water molecules crystallized, no, that process is called water of crystallization. So such salts that is the water of crystallization no the substance which got crystallized no that with the help of water no so it is called as hydrated salt on heating these hydrated crystallized salt they lose their water of crystallization and become amorphous or lose their color for example a that is copper sulfate this is a crystallized hydrated salt and this B1 is amorphous hydrolate, that is anhydrous, amorphous anhydrous salt. So crystalline hydrated salt with, will have what? That is on heating, that is it will have water. On heating you, you get this color, white color, anhydrous, that is amorphous anhydrous salt. This is crystalline hydrated salt. You have a practical, practical top here, that is practical portion in the, you, you are having this one, one of the experiment in chemistry. So the hydrated salts, common name, IUPAC name um, and molecular formula. So IUPAC means International Union of Feud and Applied Chemistry. This is the full form for IUPAC. I for international, U for union and P for pure and applied. A for applied, C for chemistry. This is the expansion of IUPAC. So first it is blue vitrol. Copper sulfate, pentahydrate that is CuSO4 5H2O into that is CuSO4 into 5H2O. This is the formula for copper sulfate, pentahydrate. Penta means 5 water molecules are here. And epsilon salt, magnesium sulfate, heptahydrate. Hepta means 7. So MgSO4 into that is point denotes here into 7H2O. Okay. Green vitrol, iron sulfate, heptahydrate, FeSO4 into 7H2O. Blue, white vitrol, zinc sulfate, heptahydrate, ZnSO4 into 7H2. So this they can ask in your one mark as well as they can ask in two marks also. Copper sulfate pentahydrate CuSO4 into 5H2O common name is blue vitrol. 
the number of molecules that is water molecules in blue withdrawal is 5 as I say you know when the formula denotes 5 means 5 water molecules are in this uh, copper sulfate that is in this CuSO4 copper sulfate. So, so the water of crystallization here is the number 5. So, the water of crystallization is 5. When blue colored of copper sulfate are gently heated, it loses its 5 water molecules and becomes colorless anhydrous copper sulfate. So, this is, this is the experiment here. In practicals, you have what will happen means you will take the copper sulfate in a water and what you have to know, you have to heat it. So, while heating... While heating the blue, the blue color the, 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 for the blue color is due to the water molecule. So while heating the through evaporation, the blue color will go off. That is the water molecules are go off. So that what happened, the blue color won't be there, and you can see the white color that is amorphous anhydrous copper sulfate. After this is uh, while heating, you get this one. By cooling, after cooling. The color will get in. So after uh, that is after cooling it or lightly you put, uh, put uh, some water in it uh, in this tube. The color will be changed back to the blue color. You can see the copper sulfate that is CuSO4 into 5H2 is on heating gives CuSO4 plus 5H2 anhydrous copper sulfate which is colorless. While cooling that is through heating it loses the color. While uh, cooling, it regains the color. Okay. So, if you, that only I say, no. If you take this from, uh, that is nothing but this anhydrous um, copper sulfate, you add little bit of water, the color will be changed. That only they had given here. Magnesium sulfate heptahydrate MgSO4 into 7H2O. So, it, it is also a crystallization that is crystallized dissolved only, crystallized hydrated and water of crystallization. Here, the water of crystallization is 7 and 7 water molecules are added here. Okay, 7 denotes the hepta. So, when you heat that is MgSO4, 7H2 is on heating, gives MgSO4 plus 7H2O, 7H2O, okay. So, while heating, it loses the color that is magnesium sulfate, heptahydrate to anhydrous a magnesium sulfate while heating, while cooling. So, when the magnesium sulfate was added with water, that is by adding little bit of water, again, that is it got cooled and again it got the Hepta that is magnesium sulfate hepta uh, hydrate. So this is uh, this uh, uh, this is the crystallization and hydrated salts. So hygroscopic certain substances when exposed to the atmospheric air at ordinary temperature it absorbs the moisture without changing their physical state. Such substance are called hygroscopic substance. And this property is called hygroscopy. That is, if you keep some of the substances, okay, outer, it absorbs the atmospheric moisture and it won't change the state. Whether it is a solid or liquid or gas, it was in the same state only, okay, it won't, but it absorbs the moisture. So, such, the substance which absorbs the atmospheric moisture, they are called hygroscopic substance and the property is called hygroscopy. Example is concentrated sulfuric acid H2SO4, phosphorus pentoxide P2O5, quicklime CaO, silica gel SiO2. Deliquence, deliquescence, certain substances which are hygroscopic when exposed to the atmospheric air at ordinary temperature, ordinary temperature absorbs enough water and get completely dissolved. Such substance are deliquescent substances and this property is called deliquescence. That is some substances absorbs the water 
atmospheric moisture not the atmospheric moisture and the substance that is absorbed in the absorbed moisture the substance is completely dissolved that substance are called deliquescent substance and this property is called deliquescence so the deliquescent substance lose their crystallized shape until that is and ultimately dissolved in absorbed water forming a saturated solution so the deliqui that is the deliquescent substance they loses their crystalline property that is the crystallized shape and they dissolve completely that is they dissolve in the the dissolve in the absorbed water they completely dissolve in the absorbed water and they form saturated solution so their proper the deliquescent substance is crystallized in form when these substance are absorbed in the water they completely dissolved in the water and they form the saturated solution so the de uh, deliquence maximum when the temperature is low the atmosphere is humid example caustic soda naoh caustic potash koh and ferric chloride fe cl3 so you can see this deliquence scent of sodium hydroxide so how the changes you can see in both the watch glasses okay differences between hygroscopic substances and deliquescent substances the first point the substance which absorbs the atmosphere atmospheric air that is atmospheric moisture and they, the substance won't dissolve in it but in deliquescent substance the substance absorbed in the atmospheric air and it dissolve in it so hygroscopic substances they do not change the state physical state but deliquescent change the physical state on exposure to air so the hygroscopic substances may be amorphous solid or liquid but deliquescent will be crystallized solids crystalline solids okay hope you understand the topic if you have any doubts post your doubts in the comment box if you want to watch the video in tamil i had given the link in the description box you can go and watch it give a thumbs up share and subscribe to science easy tech channel